This is Git Minutes episode 40, reporting from the Git Merge Conference in 2016. Git Minutes is hosted and sponsored by DigitalOcean. Use our promo code GITMINUTES10 for $10 worth of credit. Since I didn't go all the way to New York this year to attend uh, the Git Merge Conference, Christian Kuder picked up a microphone and sent me uh, some recorded interviews. Some of the audio quality suffers a lot from background noise, but it varies from interview to interview, so uh, just skip ahead a minute to the next uh, interview if you find one to be too unbearable. Uh, Christian interviewed seven people at the conference on the 5th and 6th of April, and we've packed them all into one episode here. The interviewees are Roberto Tiley, uh, appearing probably now for the fir- third time in the podcast, then there was Car- Carrie or Karen Sibrandij from uh, Train Tool. He talked to Lars uh, Schneider from uh, Autodesk. And then to Sid Sibrandij from GitLab. He talked to Tim Peters- Pedersen from Atlassian, Michael Haggerty from GitHub, Job van der Voort from GitLab, and Carlos Mati Nieto of GitHub. Okay, so could you tell us uh, who you are and what you do and why you are at the conference, please? Uh, well, I'm Roberto Tiley and I'm a software developer. I uh, work the BFG and uh, later Crowds and Submit Git, a few other things. And I'm here at the conference to well, learn more about Git and also just like to discuss how maybe we can make things easier for people to submit to the Git project itself. Yeah, so there were... Uh, discussions about that uh, yesterday at the Contributor Summit. Would you tell us what happened and uh, what will happen, hopefully? Well, so, um, yeah, we, we had a discussion about it, not just like uh, at the conference yesterday, but also last year there was a lot of, um, a lot of discussion about how we can make the process easy, because right now, it, contributing to Git means going through the mailing list. And I don't think that's likely to change in, in the near future, but it means that everyone has to uh, post uh, email messages which are very precisely formatted. In fact, usually you have to use a special tool that's contained within the Git distribution itself uh, called Git Send Email to even send those emails. And that formats them just right with the white space and everything just perfect. Um, but this flow is actually really unfamiliar to almost all, like percentage wise, of Git users. It's, so it's unrepresentative of, of, of the experience of Git that most Git users have. So it seems a bit like a, of a barrier to entry. And so I've been looking at uh, making some kind of bridge between something that's more familiar to more users, which would be like GitHub pull requests. And I've created a tool called Submit Git, which uh, if you raise a pull request, will do the job of converting that pull request into a series of patches in a format that will be accepted by the, uh, by the mailing list. And so one part of the discussion yesterday was uh, me updating with everyone with how, how that's gone so far because I, I launched it about eight or nine months ago in beta, didn't push it very hard and, uh, and even so, without me really publicizing it at all, it's, it's got a reasonably good uh, amount of usage. Um, there's been about 25 pull requests submitted using that tool um, and about uh, 14 different contributors who, who signed up to use it successfully, which is great. And so now um, what I was discussing with people yesterday was that we could uh, increase the, uh, with the visibility of the tool. So instead of at the top of the, uh, uh, the GitHub uh, version of the Git, Git repository where it says uh, the Git project does not accept pull requests, uh, or it's appointment to submit Git, and uh, maybe a few updates to documentation. Everyone overall, I think, was, was sort of fairly positive about it, was my sort of impression. And um, so yeah, we'll just be upping the visibility of that, making it kind of slightly more officially part of, of how you can submit to the Git project. And of course, I'll be needing to tweak it and make it uh, cover some of the things that doesn't quite do yet perfectly. And um, so, what what do you think uh, could be improved, more more generally speaking, around the Git uh, environment? Oh, uh, do you mean what Git as a tool or Git as a, as a community to... Like, yeah, as a, team as a community to... and uh, as a tool also. Wow. Um, I mean, it's, it's quite boring. I mean, so, I think it, I mean, my primary motivation for writing something like it 
was to make it easier, not for the people who already submit, who already contribute to Git, but to make it easier for a wider audience of like first time uh, contributors to, to fix uh, documentation and other things. And, and really, it's, it's a tool for people who are still who are still at that stage where they're kind of annoyed by the weird things in Git, unlike the sort of core contributors who, you know, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that that's rude, but they're kind of used to Git's works, and um, it's good to get documentation from people who are still struggling to to to, um, to, to come to terms with some of Git's interfaces. Um, so obviously, a big kind of bugbear of mine for a long time has been. Um, that some of the tools in Git are a little unintuitive in terms of like the command line switches or the names or whatever. And I'm thinking particularly obviously of Git filter branch because in order to use that in for, for like 19 to 95 percent of the use cases, I, I made those numbers up. People want to do a very simple thing of like deleting specific things from history. And so I, I think it's nice to be able to reflect that in the, in the tooling and and Git filter branch has some very obscure options that if you wanted to make to do that, you have to get more right, and it's quite an impressive incantation. So I, I, don't, I think as, as more people can contribute to Git, the, the usability of Git will increase, which I, I think is you know, a really good goal. We want to make Git a, a useful tool for as many people as possible because it's such a powerful tool, and um, it's, it's going to be fundamental to you know, software for the next 10 years, and we want to make sure it's good for every okay. and. Uh, Except the tools you already built, uh, what are your favorite Git uh, related tools? Mm. Or perhaps Git commands? <laughs> oh wow, uh, that's a really good question. Um, so, well, the Git pickaxe is obviously a brilliant tool, right? And um, that's a tool where uh, you can search for when a string was added or removed from your history. Uh, so you go git log dash s and then the text you're searching for and it will tell you when that string has been added or removed so it's really good for yeah checking whether I know whether a password was added or just when a, when a particular method might have been introduced even though it's been moved around several different files before then. So I really like to get pick at. Um, I feel like I should have something sort of more kind of like new and interesting to talk about but the conference hasn't started yet so I can't tell you about the new things I've seen but I'm sure there'll be some fantastic things out there. Okay, thanks a lot, Roberto. We wish you a good conference. Thank you, Christine. So could you tell me who you are and what you do around Git? Sure, uh, my name is Karen. I'm a web developer for a train tool company that builds a platform for online skill training. Oh, great. And how do you use Git? Or... Um, we use Git for our version management um, and it's been great because we work remote and there's a couple of developers working on the same product and it's awesome to use this tool to kind of keep everything organized. And do you use other tools around Git? Uh, we use GitLab as the, the website where we keep all the merge requests uh, together. Um, that's about it. Okay. And are there things that you think Git could improve uh, for users? Or? I don't know. It's pretty awesome. Um, I do know that I, I am involved with Rails Girls, which teaches beginners uh, coding through workshops with Rails. And when we try to explain Git to them, it's a very abstract concept. So something that would make it easier for beginners to get started with Git would be awesome, but I realize that's a very difficult thing because Git is complicated and that makes it awesome, but I, it would be nice if somebody or some group could try to create something that makes it easier for beginners to get started. Okay. So what, what you don't like around Git is mostly that it it seems difficult for beginners or are there other things? I think for beginners it can be a little bit daunting and hard to understand what it exactly does. I think after you use it for a while and realize what it can do, you're just in awe with the power of Git. So I don't know, it's I'm I'm a very happy customer. Okay, great. Um oh. Do you like the conference and are there other things? Yeah, I really am enjoying the conference. I was really enjoying the talk by the uh, guy from Linux, uh, explaining Great. how they use Git and what their development uh, process looks like. That was very interesting. 
there. Okay, are there other anything else you would like to say to the Git community? Or? Um, no, just thank you for contributing Git and making this awesome product that makes my life so much easier and better. And especially when I make a mistake, I, uh, I don't have to worry too much about uh, getting back to a point where everything was still working. That's awesome. Okay, thanks a lot, Kevin. You're welcome. So could you, could you tell me who you are and what you do and why you are at the conference? Okay, um, yeah, I'm Lars Schneider and I'm the technical lead for GitHub Solutions for Loading. That means um, I help teams to migrate source code from various versions of those systems uh, to Git. And uh, when they when they actually use it, I uh, try to help them to use it in a more efficient way. And um, yeah, I just try to make uh, the Git experience pleasant for, for all of our uh, engineers and owners. And um, I'm at the conference because I, um, yeah, I gave a talk about this topic and uh, I, in this talk I covered how we ease the onboarding experience for our developers. Yeah, as pretty much everyone knows, Git is a beast. Git is a very, uh, it's a complicated um, piece of software and, uh, and we want to make sure that, um, yeah, that our engineers have the most best way uh, to start with Git and just don't stumble over like minor things right at the beginning. That's one that's what we want to do. Okay, and uh, you are also a Git contributor. What what have you contributed? Right. Uh, I I started contributing to uh, Git P4 because for historical reasons we have many, many uh, projects in Perforce and um, and we want to retain the history when we bring them over to Git. And uh, Git before is great, but um, since we have so many repositories, we hit uh, a couple of edge cases in Git before, and uh, I, I fixed those. And um, I think probably the biggest contribution was that I added um, Git as support to Git before. So when you take a repository from Perforce, you can import it to Git and move the, um, the big binary files right to Git as. And it was very um, useful for us. And um, so I started with this, and uh, along the way, um, I learned how to contribute to Git, which was uh, quite an experience, and I, I broke the rules <laughs> a couple of times. Um, and, uh, and it annoyed me, so I added uh, Travis CI to, to Git. And now, you, when you're a Git developer, you can just uh, activate um, Travis on GitHub. Or you fork on it, and then it will check your branches and will make sure that it all tests run clean on um, Linux and then like um, Yeah, which helped me a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and the third kind of thing I'm, I was looking into was uh, I, I, I developed a or I made a few small patches for the contract. Um, uh, one of them were. Um, a way to disable the, the smudge vendor, which sounds like very obscure, but it actually helps to make Git LFS uh, way bit faster, and it's actually something that you, yeah, the addition to talk. And in the addition talk, they presented this new Git LFS clone command, which is basically based on this uh, on this Git core patch, um, or which is using this Git core patch. And uh, and I also made a patch for um, for config files it's, uh, when you are can now run git config uh, dash dash um, show origin, which will print your configs and then show you where this config um, originates from. And uh, yeah, because we, we do a lot of config files at our list to configure um, our development machines. And so I was constantly con frustrated because I didn't know, okay, where is this configured, right? I mean, on, on Linux and Mac OS, I, I, I know all the places for the conference, but on Windows not so much, and I had uh, time to find it. So I added this to um, to Git Core, and now um, I can easily find where the values are configured. Okay, great. And are there other things you would like to improve on, or other developers to improve on? Yes, I am. 
Yes, I think. So for me, I, I consider myself kind of experienced developer, but to be really honest, I had um, a hard time to, to get started with the game development. So um, I wrote a couple of scripts that basically ease my Git development workflow, which which now works great. But in the beginning, it was a lot of things that I had to learn. And, and I think it could improve on that. So making the, the first, making the, the, the experience for first-time contributors easier. And um, there is a great project by um, uh, Robert, I don't know. Roberto. The, Roberto, yeah, the, the guy that also uh, developed uh, uh, the BFG uh, repo cleaner, I think. And um, yeah, this, um, this project is called Submit Git, which is kind of a, a pull request kind of work, workflow for uh, the Git core um, development. And uh, yeah, I think that is a pretty neat idea. And I think it, it helps a lot of people. So um, yeah. And are there things you don't like or could be removed from Git? Um, I think I'm not. I, I touched only very small parts of the Git core code, so just I mean Git P4 obviously, and, and, and uh, I think I know uh, by now quite a few things around uh, Git config, and um, I, that's why I, I, I can't really uh, criticize it. But still, that's uh, for me. Uh, to me, it's it's actually amazing. I like uh, I like reading this source because it's um, it's it's very. And um, I think that's because uh, a couple of uh, Git contributors are really, really picky. But um, I like that because it's kind of this broken window kind of thing. You know, if you if you have a messy part of the code, uh, if, if there's only that small messy part, then more and more messy stuff gets in. So if there are people that are really picky and try to make everything clean, then um, I think this is good in the long run. In the long run. So that's why I can't. Yeah, don't see any way to. Are, are there other favorite tools that you? Um, yes, <laughs> I do. Uh, uh, that might sound strange because all the core developers they are all like diehard command line uh, people. Uh, I do like the command line too, but I use uh, Visual Client in addition. So, for instance, uh, I, I really like. Like using source tree, um, and uh, it's, it's just uh, I have a easier time to read this. And when I I like, for instance, to make um, partial commits. I know you can all those things on the command line, but it's just uh, I like to go through the code and just mark a few lines that I want to add to the next commit. And I, it's I think for me it's easier in the, in the GUI client than on the command line. Um, on the other hand. Things like rebase or um, like really sophisticated Git commands, filter branches, and whatever I do all on, on the command line. I'm really happy with it. So, bottom line here is um, I use for whatever task I use the best tool that um, that is uh, available for me. And uh, so, did you enjoy the conference? And what what did you like especially in the conference? Or what, what don't? Okay. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the conference very much, and uh, there was, I mean, lots of great discussions with people, and uh, it's it's interesting um, to see that other people, <laughs> uh, other people run into the same issues that we do. I mean, it's that that kind of um, shows me that, that we at Autodesk are on the right track, and um, and yeah, interesting talks. I really really like the talk from uh, from Atlassian. Uh, Tom, yeah, uh, Tim gave. Um, he explained Git LFS on a very, very deep technical level, but he made it in a way that is really, really uh, comprehensive, uh, which was quite, uh, which I was impressed by. And um, I think everyone who is thinking about using LFS and at a bigger scale, they should watch this talk and, uh, and understand it. And and also. Uh, the last talk was very, very, very good. Uh, um, uh, the one that compared like um, software engineering with um, English 
trip. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was quite interesting. Okay, thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Hi, so could you tell me who you are and uh, what you do and why you are at the conference today? I'm uh, Sid, I'm the CEO of GitLab and uh, I'm at the conference because we care about Git and want to see all the recent developments and talk to people that also are passionate about Git. Great. And um, what, what are you doing at your company and uh, in your company? I'm the CEO, so that means I'm responsible uh, for having a great team, uh, making sure that we have a vision together and that everybody is aware of it and that there's always enough money. Um, apart from that, I, I mingle in a lot of things. Right now I'm super excited about our CI and CD uh, products, so making sure you can have better testing and better deployments by leveraging uh, files in your source control. Great. And could you tell us about your plans, about your projects? Sure, for, so for GitLab, all our plans are, are pretty public uh, on aboutgitlab.com slash direction. You can find all the stuff we've got planned for the next couple of releases and what is on our wish list. Um, more than a thousand people contributed to GitLab and obviously we're not in control of when and what they contribute, but that's always a, a nice surprise when uh, somebody comes out of the woodwork and, and makes something nice. Um, GitLab as a company, we want to um, add more tools that you need so that you can do the complete software uh, software development lifecycle in GitLab. So if you install GitLab, it already has a chat component uh, with Mattermost. Um, it has integrated CI, it has uh, wikis and issue trackers. Um, we're now focusing on also adding uh, deployment capabilities. And later on, we're looking at uh, adding a browser IDE as well, so you can have your complete development workflow within uh, GitLab. Oh, great. And um, do you have plans or things you would like to improve in Git Core? I think with Git Core, uh, one thing that we talked about is we think Git uh, LFS, the large file uh, support, is amazing. Yeah. We, uh, we see a lot of people using it. And it would be very nice if it was integrated in Git. Um, that's uh, super, super complex, but we're at least going to have a good look at seeing whether we can contribute there. Great. And uh, are there things you don't like about Git Core? <laughs> oh, we love Git, so there's, there's nothing we, uh, we don't like. Um, I think that uh, it's sometimes hard to use for people that are new to the project. And uh, I was inspired by the people from Git Kraken. I was talking to them yesterday, and he said, like, yeah, he was the go-to person. People would start using Git as his company. They'd recommend to use a GUI client, and then they'd have a problem, and they come to him, and he basically recommend him them to um, to start using the command line. And after a while, he thought. Why isn't there a client that can do the same things as the command line where people don't have to switch tools? And that's the origin of Git Kraken. And I thought that was a really amazing story. And that's basically fixing something that's still a bit broken in the Git ecosystem, the onboarding for new people. OK, and are there other Git related tools or around the Git uh, ecosystem that you are interested or that you use a lot? And, uh, I'm. I'm super excited about having more of your infrastructure in your uh, source control. So we've got, now got GitLab CI to JAMO, uh, where you define how your project should be tested. Uh, we got uh, deploy to Kubernetes, where you define a Kubernetes .yaml file. And I think it's interesting that all these, um, all these different environments are also going to be version control, basically, and added to your repository. I think that's an awesome trend. Okay. Thanks. Do you have anything to say more about uh, this conference or, or the Git community? Well, I, it was um, yesterday was the first day uh, attending the Git Contributor uh, Conference, and it was amazing to to, to meet all those people that uh, that contribute there. It was such a great atmosphere, and and this conference has been organized very well. I, it's. It's, it's, it's so well done, um, so kudos to uh, GitHub for organizing And it. you are a sponsor? 
of yeah. the conference? Yeah, GitLab is one of the friends of the uh, conference and we're sponsoring the after and party the tonight. Party, yeah, okay. Great, thanks for sponsoring this and for answering these questions. Thanks for contributing to Git. Thanks. Okay, so could you tell me who you are, what you do, and why, why you are here at the conference? <laughs> For sure. Uh, so I'm Tim from Atlassian. Uh, these days I'm a senior developer slash developer advocate, so I sort of split my time between uh, writing software and traveling around to talk at conferences and writing articles about uh, how we do development at Atlassian. Um, so this is my first Git merge. Uh, I was at the Git Contributor Summit yesterday as well, just kind of learning a little bit about how the core Git contribution uh, process goes. Um, I'm here specifically to present about uh, Git LFS, or Large File Storage, which is a new project, uh, new wish project that was announced uh, at Git Merge last year uh, to solve the problem that Git has with storing large binary content. Um, the, the reason I'm here talking about this is because it's actually a, a joint project between Lassen uh, and GitHub uh, and a few other open source developers. Um, so it's kind of an exciting collaboration in that aspect as well. Great. Um, is that the same working on other things uh, related to uh, uh, In terms of open source uh, stuff, I think we have. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if we have submitted uh, upstream patches to Git before. I know we're, we're, we've been a little bit active on the mailing list, uh, particularly in terms of some like, Git scaling issues in the past, uh, particularly around the Bucket Server project. Um, internally, we do use Git in quite a few different projects. Um, and, the Bucket Server and the Bucket Cloud, extensively uh, Git hosting software. Uh, we also have a Git uh, client. It's relatively popular called Source Tree um, that a lot of developers and also non-technical folks too uh, used to interact with their Git repositories. Uh, and, um, CI service uh, also supports Git, so we <laughs> we do do heavily use Git in time. Um, we also maintain a fairly large uh, microsite on uh, Git documentation or Git best practices about uh, what Git and Git right, which is at lassie.com slash Git. <laughs> yeah. I saw that Nicola Paulucci sent a few uh, patches to the Git mailing list. Yeah, he did, he did. I forget, I forget exactly what he was contributing. It was something to do with, um, uh, it wasn't sub modules, it was. Shoot, I can remember. Do you remember what the patches were? <laughs> there was something about, I'm sure it was recording the URL. Oh, it was for some trees, I think. So I think it records the URL for uh, the repository that a subtree came from as part of the commit by default. Which is useful so you can see where the subtree is coming from. Tell me if I got that wrong. <laughs> but I think that was what he was working on. So, and do you guys have uh, ideas about? How Git Core could be improved? Uh, I think that the, the Git contributors are doing doing a great job, I and mean, definitely from our from our perspective, uh, focusing on the right things. I mean, so I think at Atlassian we we are obviously we're big consumers of Git, um, and uh, when you look at the release notes for every major minor release, you always see performance improvements. Um, and certainly the first two topics for discussion at the summit yesterday are uh, handling uh, large repositories and handling large objects in repositories as well. Um, the two things that hit a lot of our customers um, very hard in terms of like great big repository histories. Um, certainly we we yeah. run into troubles with our own internal uh, repos as well that are Jira's over 10 years old and has tens of thousands of commits. Um, so certainly I think that uh, Keep, keep doing what you're doing in terms of <laughs> okay. Git development because it's, it's, uh, it's hitting the right stuff. Okay, good. Um, I also like the, the focus on uh, in recent releases on improving the uh, end user experience, particularly for uh, new Git users, is really good. So um, Emma uh, Emma Jane from Westby, uh, who gave a talk today about uh, how the Git man pages have been improved and the Git help experience uh, over the last over the last year, um, is really cool because I think the as, as more and more teams are adopting Git, then we're sort of bringing along all these new developers and new, new time. And I think that the, a lot of the sharp edges that we used to run into when I first started using Git a few years ago are uh, gone now in the experience. <laughs> okay. And um, what do you think about the conference? Or? Oh, the conference is fantastic. Yeah, like uh, this is probably the, the most enjoyable tech conference I've been to in the last year because it's. Every single session is about Git, so it's, it's always about something that I'm passionate about. Um, and uh, yeah, quite often I'll go to tech conferences and a 
I'll enjoy you know three or four sessions, but here because they're all focused on technology, it is so dear to my heart. It's kind of it's, it's a pretty place to be. Um, and there's surprisingly there's there's common themes through a lot of the presentations. So uh, I spoke a lot about Git LFS, um, but other other presenters also mentioned Git LFS as part of uh, you know, the tools that they were presenting, the tools that they were describing. Um, but there's been very little kind of overlap. It's more just been kind of a Okay, so thanks and thanks for your question for answering this kind of thing. Oh, no worries. Hey, thanks very much. So could you tell us who you are, what you do, and why you were at the conference? Uh, my name is Michael Haggerty. I work for GitHub, and I've been a core Git contributor for, uh, I don't know, several years now. Um, so I was here for the... Um, for the developer summit, obviously, like it's a great place to get together and meet people, and um, and then for the Git Merge summit after the Git Merge summit afterwards, I listened to the talks. There were some very interesting talks, and uh, yeah, so that's why I was here. Okay, and uh, what are you working on these days about Git? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been specialized in the reference backend for quite a while, so I'm maintaining, kind of maintaining that. Uh, and I uh, try to review patches in that area and so on. The most interesting develop right, development right now is the pluggable ref references backend that uh, David Turner is currently working on. And um, I've been trying to help out with that as, as time allows, because uh, I think that's really going to be a, um, a very useful development. Yeah. And the goal is to have Git uh, refs stored in a database, for example? Yeah, I see it as has two interesting aspects. The first is simply having the ability to to, uh, to plug in different reference backends, so different storage schemes for your references. Currently, references are stored in the file system as a combination of loose references and packed references. The loose references is one file per reference, and the packed references is a big text file containing a list of many, many references. So um, that's, that's a good system, especially for local use. It's, fast, it doesn't have any uh, real uh, performance problems for normal people, but for uh, but it does have some problems like, for example, you can't, um, you can't store references, uh, refer logs after the references have been deleted, because there can be conflicts with new references that are created with similar names. Uh, there's also a problem on uh, case, case insensitive file systems that Reference names are stored in the file system. So if the file system, uh, so you can't, for example, have two references that are named similarly but with different capitalization. Um, so those are things that could be fixed by having um, different reference backends in general. And then the um, the other aspect of David Turner's patch series is the um, change to store references in a database called LMDB. This is a really fast memory-based uh, database that uh, that has some performances adva performance advantages over the files backend. So, I, frankly, I'm more interested in the in the ability to change to have a pluggable backend where there's a well-defined API and anybody can implement that API and then store references however they like. Okay. And are there other areas that you think could be, or, or it would be interesting for you to to improve? Mm. Well, I have my hands full, frankly. <laughs> yeah, but doing a lot of a, working a, a had, lot on internal GitHub projects, and uh, yeah. some of them have to do with upstream Git. Some of them are uh, other projects. So, uh, so. But I'm not. I'm not actively looking for new projects if now. If you had a team and uh, you, you could uh, ask them to do anything on core Git, what would, would you ask them to do? Oh, uh, well, there, there are lots of things. I think it would be really interesting to have. Um, I think there, there are possibilities to have faster packing, um, maybe based on um, some kind of a file checksum scheme that would look for similarities in files much faster. Instead of having to keep whole files in memory, you could sort of um, fingerprint the files and then compare the fingerprints. I think there was work on, done on that a while ago, but it, as far as I know, it never got anywhere. I think that that's a promising 
helpful and would help us, um, for example, on our GitHub servers, we're acting as one of our most expensive operations. Okay. I'd also, I also think the reference advertisement um, part of, of uh, fetch could be made faster. If you have very, very many references, um, they all have to be transmitted across the protocol before you can start trans transferring objects at all. And uh, there have been several several proposed schemes for making that easier. But, um, that requires a change to the protocol, so it's more invasive change. But I think it has a lot of would have a lot of benefits. And I, could it be part of the re resumable clone uh, effort? Or have you? I haven't been following that super closely. Uh, in so far as that requires a protocol change, then you know you've opened then the doors to to. Uh, to making other changes to the protocol, including the ones that might be necessary for more efficient reference negotiation. Okay. And are there parts of Git that you don't like very much or you think would benefit from, uh, from some other improvements? Uh, I think um, the main friction that most people have with Git is it's Still kind of, it's still pretty complicated to use. There's a lot of commands, and you can get into weird states. Just the other day, you know, I've been a Git developer for years and years. And just the other day, I got some state where the file had been changed, and then the change had been reverted, but the index thought it was still changed. And and then you try a, a reset, and you try a checkout dash dash file name, and and I often try a few things before something actually clears up the state and sets it back to uh, to unchanged. Okay, and um, what are your favorite tools around Git? Um, Git Bisect is awesome. Um, I love Rebase Interactive. I do a lot of rebasing because uh, the way that the Git project works is uh, you submit a, a patch series and every single patch needs to be sort of perfect, so to speak. It, we don't have... Um, this, some people use a practice where you create some changes and then you um, you notice a problem in patch number one so you fix it in patch number four and so on. Um, we don't do that so we want every single patch to be sort of a logical self-contained um, change which I think is good, good practice but that means that you have to re rewrite your practice patches a lot. So um, I use Rebase Interactive an awful lot. Um, I also use my own tool Git iMerge to, um, to rearrange patches and um, so uh, I think it's the tools are really strong, and and that's something that I think is a great strength of Git. You you gave a training, or someone else gave a training about iMerge at the conference. <laughs> that's right. I wrote this um, several years ago in 2013, I guess, um, and I gave one talk at a conference about it and put some uh, blog posts up on the on the internet about it. Um, but haven't really actively been promoting it or anything. I use it. I use it almost daily, so um, and it does what I need. Uh, and some people at GitHub were looking for topics that might be interesting uh, training sessions, training topics. And I just threw that out there as, oh, if you want something kind of uh, non-mainstream and a little bit advanced, this might be interesting. And, and this guy thought it was a great idea and, and actually did the whole talk without even uh, without really even my involvement, so um, I went to listen to the talk and was <laughs> amused to, to hear the project described by another person. Okay. And are there other things at the conference that you like or find, found great? Just in general, talking to people, seeing them face to face. Um, right, I've been working with David Turner on this patch series for quite a while, but I've never met him before, so uh, just having a high bandwidth uh, situation where you can talk to people and, you know, maybe learn a little bit more about their, their deeper wishes and plans and what they, you know, what their real motivation is and what their priorities. Um, I think that's really invaluable and I think it's great that we have these uh, Git Merge conferences. Yeah, and the, the part two was great too, I think. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you have anything else to say? Um, no, I, I think uh, one thing I'd like to say is uh, get involved, you know, there, there are probably a lot of people listening who think Git is this, you know, ivory tower and, and the software just comes down to them via their, their uh, 
installer system, um, but it's really a project made up of just normal people. And uh, if you if you want to program, that's great. If you don't want to program, there are tons of things. That, you know, don't complain about the documentation. Send a patch to us. You know, rewrite it. Everybody can can make a little improvement here or there. And, um, and the more people we have working on it, the better. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks. Thanks for talking to me, Christian. So could you tell us who you are and what you do around Git? Sure. Uh, my name is Job van der Voort. I'm the Vice President of Product at GitLab. So I am responsible for making sure that GitLab ships a good product every single month and that it has features that are interesting to the community of Git and the customers of ours. Great. And uh, how? I'm going to go right here. Yes. But don't you have to move anything. And um, yeah, so what kind of features are you working on these days? So there's several things that we are really interested in at GitLab, and I think specifically now we're thinking a lot about how can we make sure that if you have your code in Git, how can you make sure that it actually ends up being tested so that it's continuous integration, but even more, how can you make sure that this is deployed and how can you make sure that that is actually all in version controlled? So making sure that the whole continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline is all in Git. And this is something we've been thinking a lot about and this is what we've been working on a lot. Okay, and are there features in Core Git that could help you for this? Uh, in Core Git, I think for us the most important thing, we always lean towards using the most basic tools, so the very core set that we already have. The thing that we can always uh, see improve is, of course, performance. I think uh, everyone would agree with that. And anything that makes it easier for people to either contribute to Git itself um, or just, in general, contribute to a project, making it easier to use Git. Okay. And um, are there other tools that you like around Git? Yeah, I, I, I always like people that make little scripts that help make it easier to work with Git, like little command line interfaces. And any innovation in the in terms of Git clients, so for instance, having Git easy, easy to use on Windows, for instance, or for instance, there's this new Git client called Git Kraken. I really like those to see those kind of things because they lower the threshold of getting uh, started with Git. Okay, and uh, do you like this conference? Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great that GitHub organized it. Uh, There's some really great speakers and we've been hearing some really nice things, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Jack. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks. So could you tell me who you are, what you do and why you were at the conference? Right, so I'm Carlos Martin. I work at GitHub in the systems team. I'm, I maintain libgit 2 uh, and some bindings and sometimes I contribute to Git when uh, there's you know, missing stuff there. And well, I'm here as, you know, as a co-contributor to one of the main implementations, uh, so we can then you know, meet the, the other developers and talk about the, the common things that we, we need to, to solve, and all of the, the issues that we, we all face, like Windows file system and other okay. <laughs> and things. And what you are working on right now? Um, so I, love, I spend a lot of time maintaining the libgit2 and trying to add the features and make it less annoying for the, uh, as an API. I'm also working on some internal things, just the um, the communication between the web um, workers and like the actual data and, and the, the file servers where, where the data is held. So the, the web server asks questions and then the, the backend servers reply and so looking into that now. Okay, and are there other things that could be improved around Git or libgit2? So, um, I was looking lately at the whole GPG signature which uh, we just launched on github.com and it, there seems to be a, a lack of actual real world usage of uh, this, like the verify tag or the commit, since there are some surprising cases there, so like I, I, I think I will be looking more into this, um, try, to try and see if, like, if there is a, a way we can make the, 
the results less surprising when, when we don't know the signature. Because we don't know the you may get like, the response, yes, the signature is correct, but you don't know the origin of the signature. And as far as I can tell, only the merge command will actually take that into consideration, uh, not verify tag or perfect domain. Um, I've also been, well, uh, also been looking into the, the file system operations on Windows, uh, because there we're rather slow. Uh, because opening a file, writing to it, closing, and then going on to the next file, doing checkout is, it gets slow there. Um, it's not great on Unix either, but it's especially bad on, on Windows. So we've been thinking um, about how to parallelize this operation while keeping the same semantics on Windows, because you also have the problem of um, mixed case uh, files should uh, have the same semantics as though you were opening them in series. So something I will be looking into as well. Okay, and are, are there other parts of it that you would like to improve or would be to also? Yeah, let's see. Um, I'm, there, one thing I'm, I'm adding right now to Libp2 is cancellation support. So when you're, um, when you're shilling out to Git to do, for example, network operations or a checkout, and you want to cancel this operation, you can simply kill the process. Uh, then it becomes harder with Libp2 because it's a, it's a library running inside your own process. So even if you kill the thread, now you have a bunch of resources that are freed and maybe you kill the, the thread in the middle of a lock, so now you can't do any operations anymore. So we want to um, make it easier to give a... Um, we're basing it on the .NET um, design where you give a cancellation token and then you say cancel and then the internals um, check regularly. We already have something similar but not as powerful with the network support where you can call a function and then every once in a while the, um, the, network, the network stack will check but we don't, we don't do non-blocking I.O. or we don't wait for, for, the net, for the socket to be ready for reading. So if you're stuck in a read call, we, we still won't check and you will still have a thread that are doing something. That's one of the things I'm really, I'm really glad I, I have time to work on. Okay. And what are your favorite tools around Git? Um, um, so I'm, I'm a fan of, of the website. <laughs> so we use the GitHub for Basically everything, um, the pull request, it works well there. I um, also like the, the integration with the, the CI tools. That's really invaluable for us because we wanted to make sure that we run on um, as many systems as possible. Uh, so we have um, test builds on um, Travis and Upveyor. So we build on uh, Linux, on OS X, and on Windows because it's always somewhat surprising what breaks, uh, depending on, on oh, uh, if, if you say, I'm just gonna tweak this t tiny thing, and then you realize, oh, the semantics are completely different on Windows, or, oh, this breaks on case insensitive file systems, and then only Linux works. Um, so that, that's actually one of the, the, biggest, the biggest helps, I think, is just having test machines, and that will build the code for you on the different operating systems. Um, other than that, I think most of my tooling is largely vanilla. Like I will you know, go blame with you know, dash C, dash C to figure out where, where did this code actually come from. And then often it's just me being silly a year ago. Um, but I do like the, the Emacs integration as well, um, where it will, it will just fill in the buffer with the blame and then you can keep going with that. And, and it's better than just going out to the, to the shell. Or I'm trying out Space Max now, and that will actually, when you edit a file, it will add uh, markings on the side, so like classes or uh, classes where oh you've added this since the last commit. So that's really, really cool to see uh, without having to go out to the shell again. Okay, and what did you like at the conference? I like meeting a bunch of the of people that I've um, I've seen online, like they were submitting pull requests or opening issues using the uh, library. Uh, but I hadn't like ever seen them, uh, and it was great seeing all of these uh, new people that sort of, you know, I've met online and we've had discussions, but then never actually met online. So it's, it's great being able to see everyone in person. Okay. 
So thanks, Carlos, very much. And uh, perhaps see you at the next conference. So, so. Yeah, thank you. And that was the last interview. Big thanks to Christian Coder for sharing these interviews with the podcast. It probably will be some time before the next episode of this podcast appears. So in the meantime, you can head over to uh, git.github.io or just search for Git Rev News uh, to subscribe to uh, the monthly uh, newsletter, which I am uh, producing together with, uh, among others, uh, Christian. Uh, it comes out on a, on a monthly basis uh, with all the latest news and discussions from uh, regarding to Git the development. This podcast is, uh, again, sponsored by DigitalOcean. You can sign up using the promo code git 10 in order to support the show. Until next time, thank you for listening.